and we should be uh, coming up somewhere here any minute now. There we go. It's starting to initialize. Anyway, what I was going to say is when I was in China, right across the street was a 7-Eleven. But there were two things. There was something very, very different about the 7-Eleven. Uh, you couldn't buy, are you ready for this, Slurpees. You know why? Anybody have an idea? Tom, you know. It was a 7-Eleven. Uh, wait a minute. But there were two things. There wait a minute. Very, Somebody, very some, you got me up again the there, Jim. No, uh, not me. I'm stopped. Buy. Really? Ready for this? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know it. I, I know, you know what why? it is this time. Hold on a Anybody second. Anybody have an idea? Hold on. Tom, you know. Yeah. A, uh, no, you know what it is? It was, it was me. Replay. Replay. It was me. Okay, here. There's Damien. Hi, Damien. Hi, Alex. I have a picture of you and your cat right now. Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, I, I'm calling from my phone, so I don't get video right now. Right, so and we, I don't, I don't actually have a whole lot of time because the girl's going to be home soon, and I'll have to hang up soon. But yeah, I just want to let you let you know that I'm just I'm listening every day, every morning, and um, yeah, um, I really enjoy hearing your show, and uh, keep it up, man. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Dave, man. Um, uh, I wish I could participate a little more than I am. And um, I wish that, you know, I, I, I can get on for Albert's show every once in a while. And then at seven o'clock, it's like, psh, well, you know, you know I know we, we know we know you've become pussy whipped like the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and Damien, and there's and Damien there's a girlfriend going, it's time for dinner, Damien. You last can't night, talk uh, yeah. to your little friends. You know, Damien, <laughs> last night's show was all about getting it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah I, I, listened to that, I listened to that this morning, and I have to say, you guys were cracking me up for two hours straight. Yeah. I mean, that that show is really awesome. Well, uh, it's you know, it's something. It, they're basically guys here, and it was basically a guy topic. You know. Yeah, kind of. By the and way, we're being... if you crack up for more than two hours, see a doctor's advice. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank well, you, Jim. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Damien. I appreciate the call. I know you have to go eat yeah. dinner. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, thank you, everybody, for um, everything you do, because I crack up for all of you, and I, I enjoy hearing every one of the Citizen Panel members. Well, the, I do, too. Thank you. And come join us some night, you and your loved one. I will. And I she, will try. And she can pussy whip you on the air. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sneezing. Excuse me. Resume tight. Oh boy. Uh, uh, let's see here. We right now we got uh, Charles here, and we got Patrick, and we got Phil, and we got Jim, and we got Josh, and we got Hey Rob. Hey there, Alex. How are you? I'm good. How are recording you? every inch of this, aren't you? Uh no. I'm not recording it. I'm. Where do you Letting get? Where it. do you get? Where do you get get it from? Do you go get it from the internet or what? Sometimes I get it. I just right click and download. Other times I I use Team Viewer and I to the file transfer and I I do that. Yeah, yeah. Different ways. Right. And this is an easy way to hear the whole two hours and decide what you're going to use. Well, and that's why you heard me on this week. I was on with you pretty much every night, but last night. Yeah normally do that but i've had no time to really read listen to this anywhere else so i figured i can come on and i can get my notes and then do my stuff yeah well we always love having you here and we really appreciate what you do you know you don't you don't have to do it as well as you do it if you don't want to but you, no. you do a great job i do it how i have to do it I, it's you know if you're putting your name on something you want to do it a certain but you see that's what i was talking about though this is this is devotion to the project. I if mean, I can't do it up to snuff, then I, I don't want to do it. Yeah. I just assume, say, look, you know, I can't do this or cut it back yeah. or whatever. But to just do a shoddy ass job just because is not good. No, yeah, well, you do a great job. You do Thanks. a great job. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, we could use we have uh, what, seven people now. We still have room for three at the table. So if anybody wants to call, it's uh, Great American Broadcast. Uh, so, uh, good evening to all of you. You all look uh, shiny and happy. And uh, uh, what are you wearing tonight? What is the hat tonight, uh, Jim? It's my, uh, it's my communist hat. I had to go get my uh, prescriptions refilled. And being a good Canadian uh, and my socialist medicine policies, I can't get my prescription filled unless <laughs> I put on my party hat. 
and, unless you put on ah, your party hat. Patrick. <laughs> and Patrick has on his communist shirt. <laughs> Let's see here. Wait a minute. Oh, oh it, 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 it is, isn't it? What is that? It was a KGB. KGB. Yep. Yeah, tonight wow. at Communist uh, Friday, what a K. I don't know where I put my <laughs> Mao hat. I got a Mao hat when I was in China. Why aren't you wearing it? You're, think, you're, you're not. Because it's 90 it. degrees there. <laughs> I got, no, because I. It's I, degrees where Jim's at. Huh? The 100 degrees where Jim's at. <laughs> yeah. And he's still wearing it. Yeah, not for much longer, though. It's like dying in Go here. ahead, berate me. Berate me <sighs> if you so desire to. But anyway, we could use some more callers, and uh, uh, also, uh, uh, you know, if you want to watch us on the TV, we're up there now, too, although uh, our, what happens is it takes audience away from the radio thing. It's very strange. It's kind of a, you can see the radio thing goes down, and the TV people go up, and, but we get a lot, oddly enough, get a lot of TV viewers over the week who watch that TV thing. Uh, last week, I think it was almost 400 people that watched it, close to, no, well, close to 500. Wow. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, another, it's another outlet. Uh, 492 of them were me. <laughs> really? <laughs> you, well, you know something. There, there is an egotistical part to, the, to, to uh, Phil. Phil will write me when the uh, iTunes isn't running just right. Because I know he's trying to listen to himself. Am I right about that? Uh, you know, the thing about my microphone and the way I have it set up is I don't know what it sounds like. Uh, you seem to be able to know when your levels are right or aren't right. And I'm a uh, direct line in uh, from my preamp without any opportunity to, uh, to hear uh, my, my levels. So I check my levels. You don't have any kind of meter or something you can look at? Uh, yeah, there, there's a, there's a view meter, but it's, uh, there, there's it, actually a meter, uh, on, uh, on Skype. Uh, yeah. Well. Uh, although I'm, I, maybe it's because I'm not calling in using uh, Skype directly. Uh, I'm How using, you? uh, your, your link. You, no, you're still using so, Skype. Yeah. 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 It's Skype, but it's, uh, I don't see the Skype panel. Yeah. Now, Jim has been working on a little project for us, haven't you, Jim? We're, we're uh, 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 what do you call it? Google uh, Hangouts is concerned. Where where uh, your uh, your t uh, YouTube is concerned too? Uh, yeah. No, I was looking at Google Hangouts some more because they they did some changes to it. And they said they were upgrading some stuff, so I looked at it, and then I was looking at at YouTube Live. And uh, Patrick was helping me out. We weren't getting a very good image. Oh, it was oh really? Very, a lot of lag. But well, again, that well, could well, have wait, been my were, were, were you were you doing that from from Revelstoke? Because you know you do have low bandwidth up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if we did uh, it, maybe we'll try it sometime from my place and see what doing something directly to YouTube. I guess we could do this directly to YouTube, couldn't yeah, we? I think yeah. we can quite easily. Yeah, from yeah. what uh, from what from what I was looking at, y using the uh, the um, uh, the screen that we use for uh, Skype. You don't have to record it to it like an MP4 uh, file uh, uh, and, no, and then you, place you, it on no, YouTube. But you were thinking of doing it with I, I video don't. or just yeah. audio? I uh, don't. Video but, and audio. Yeah, I don't think the people would see the uh, would see the Skype window like they do with with. Um, oh, so it'd be just be audio. Just, it'd just be so audio. It would be a picture of you. Oh, that's. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Talking and and it would just be sort of, it would be they would hear the the panel. Jim, is that just if you went directly from the uh, from the uh, live to to the YouTube directly? Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah, I, think I was using um, what was I, I was uh, I wasn't using the the Google Hangout. Uh, encoder. I was using my own uh, Adobe encoder. Because one day, I think it was Patrick and you and I and who else? We had a couple other people involved. Uh, me on the, uh, the Google you? Plus. Yeah, where well, we did uh, we did uh, Google uh, you Plus uh, Google Hangouts, and yeah, we tried I called, it. Uh, and from we my didn't cell phone. We didn't like the way it sounded. We didn't feel no. that the sound of the people calling was very good. You know, and uh, I, I thought you just didn't like what I had to say. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. Yeah. No, they, they seem to have a few new wrinkles in it where 
people who join the conversation, their video isn't added right away to the conversation, so you can decide if you want to have them. I don't know if they have the ability... You have the ability to turn off their camera and, and mute them, but I don't know if they've changed the fact that the person can unmute themselves if they want. That's, so That's right. I remember you discovered that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, so, are, there are a few advantages to it, but uh, it, it's still uh, not as good as this. I mean, like tonight, once we got a few problems solved, uh, everybody, because they're using great microphones and everything, it sounds terrific, you know. But my video keeps turning off. What is that about? It's kind of odd. Huh? Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Am I, am I pixelated tonight or am I? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. bit. A little bit. Yeah. Anyway. But no one else is. Uh, have they come up with a newer version of Skype that we can upgrade to? Because it keeps bugging us. I know. No, uh, I haven't heard anything yet. Well, see, here's the problem we had, folks. Uh, I use Skype, and I use it for Mac. What was happening was uh, Albert was having a problem where uh, he couldn't do the group thing, and he kept knocking people off when he would do the group thing. And uh, then I would go on. I had no problem. Then uh, Revelstoke Jim would go on. And he would have the problem. And then Miranda would go on, and she wouldn't have the problem. And what it turned out was the similarity between Miranda and I is, uh, besides being terribly wonderful people, uh, <laughs> it w was that we um, um, have both used Macs. And the other people were using, and it turned out, and you, you again, in one of your day, you know, times of helping us out, you got a hold of Skype and said, what the hell's going on here? And they said, oh, well, that's the new Skype that, you know, was in, you installed a couple of weeks ago when we asked you to, and, and it was screwing up. And uh, I, uh, then they said they'd let you know when they fixed it, and they've never gotten a hold of you. No, I haven't heard a thing. So there's your job Monday. <laughs> Get a hold of Skype and see what their problem is and see if it's clear for you guys to use the new Skype. But you went back to the old Skype and everything was fine. So. Yeah, it just it just it it annoys you saying, "Would you like to upgrade?" Yeah, yeah. every have, time you sign on, have, yeah, it right. does that. Yeah. Well, but I'm I'm going to go look at Max this weekend, so yeah, well, I'm all, close. All, 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 I'll tell you, all you really need, I'm, I'm, in fact, I'm thinking of doing this if this machine ever breaks for the server, is all you really need is one of those Mac minis. They're perfect. Yeah. You don't yeah. need maybe, big... maybe for this, but are you doing graphics and Photoshop no, and, no, but and you, other things? No, but the Mac mini can do all that. Uh, yeah, the we Mac, had one at work for that. The Mac mini? And, and, and the video yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, no, it, does, it, does, it does it all. It, it, it's a, a quad core. It's a does speedy multiple machine. monitors. Huh? Yeah. What? Does multiple monitors? Yeah. It also does Thunderbolt, or yeah. th uh, whatever that new thing is for monitors. It all. It's it, for it, a lot it, of things. In a lot of ways, it's it's as powerful as the machine I would be replacing, and it's it has a footprint of you know that a much. You know, yeah, it looks Same. like an Apple TV. Yeah. Well, it's a little bigger than that, and you can uh, you know you can put in uh, add memory to it. And it's uh, it's uh, uh, it, it, and all you have to add to it then is a keyboard, mouse, monitor, and you've already got that, you know. So uh, uh, it, it, to me, the Mac Mini is if I if let's say we had this network, we're making money. We were going to set people up with a studio. I would just send them a Mac Mini with all the stuff loaded into it and say, here you go, you know, because it's a it, it's a really great answer. And I asked Miranda, who I consider maybe the most computer savvy person that I know, would the Mac Mini do the job? She said, absolutely, you know. So why go out and spend, you know, what? I think they still sell these Mac Pros, but they're like 3,000 bucks a piece. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah, those are serious boxes. Yeah, well, they're serious boxes, but the box, like I've got a quad core here. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty hefty. But the other one that we use for the server is just, you know, it got no more in it than a uh, uh, than a Mac Mini would have. So, you know. So I'm cool. thinking about getting the Mac Pro, and uh, uh, only because of uh, I, I'm also thinking that I want to do some graphic work with uh, Photoshop, 
And uh, yeah, but you, 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 uh, can... you, you would have to do a ton of rendering. You would have to be doing I'm lots using of all, all video. raw files. Uh, uh, no, I'm not doing video. I'm doing stills. Uh, I can I, do it. I used to do, when I worked at, uh, the last company I worked at, we did uh, a lot of uh, animation, gra uh, computer animation. And we would we would take and do like 360 degree views of like a, a famous chapel or something. Yeah. And those mm -hmm. things require, you know, lots and lots of yeah. power. But yeah. for, just for power. Uh, for Photoshop, for, for yeah, Photoshop, Photoshop, you don't need much. Yeah, uh, you yeah, know, I, I, I was going to get one of those uh, Wacom Cintiqs, the 24 inch uh, that uh, overhangs on the table, and then you can write directly onto the screen uh, and um, Why? start start to do uh, you know multiple layer images, uh, of photography. Well, I mean, but that is, that isn't that's drawing. It's not photography. Well, I'll take the what, photograph. What, what I'm saying is you could use a Mac Mini, and, and it would more than take care of everything you need for Photoshop. Mm. I'd even rely on it for video, to be honest mm. with you. And the reason mm. I have these hefty machines was for video. It wasn't for... for if yeah, I, if you I need was, rendering, that kind of thing. You need those big, hefty Mac Pros. The, the 3D yeah. imaging and things like that that yeah. I do occasionally, mm -hmm. uh, animation. Uh, you need a little heftier machine than... Uh, uh, yeah. Than normal, but you know, for what you would want to do, I w I wouldn't overspend because mm -hmm. you'd be there'd be more horsepower and everything there than you would ever use for photography. All right, I'll check that out because right now I'm using a 2010 uh, uh, MacBook Pro, yeah. and uh, even though it was uh, the uh, the best that you could get. Uh, from directly from Apple, it was a 2.8 instead of a 2.7. It was, yeah. you know, but it still doesn't have uh, Thunderbolt. And uh, when you're downloading files, especially now, I well, I'm, well, my uh, current uh, uh, th number one on on downloading files, Thunderbolt won't do anything for you. Well, if you can have a Thunderbolt, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, card reader. I a what? Uh, a card reader. I have. I uh, take my CF cards, and I and I have one of those Lexar uh, um, I think FireWire eight hundreds. We're, we're losing people here, but all I'm telling yeah. you is Thunderbolt is meant for monitors and for output to hard drives, and and, and USB three will take care. Will be fast enough for anything you need. Yeah. Which, by the way, the Mac Mini has. My well. big Mac that I just spent three thousand dollars on a couple about a year ago. Uh, doesn't even have a USB three port coming out of it, but that's fast enough. So yeah. Anyway, are we boring uh, everybody? <laughs> Josh is waiting for the bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's only one other thing about YouTube. I understand that when you download to YouTube, that mm -hmm. it uh, it takes a while to uh, to download those videos. Uh, r r YouTube, it takes time to download those videos. Yeah, it's not as instantaneous as uh, some of the other things I've seen you do. Uh, the, the, you're not really supposed to download off of YouTube. That it's not no, no, not off of to YouTube to post to YouTube. Oh, to, oh, post to YouTube is always slow. Yeah, it's it's probably the slowest of them all. By the way, I keep getting kicked. My picture keeps getting kicked off here, yeah. and it's the night we're doing the TV, right? It's and you're pixelated. pixelated. And I'm pixelated. Well, I'm not yeah. pixelated in what we're recording here, and everybody looks terrific tonight. I know I do. You know <laughs> you do. So, Josh, let's get to you. Where's that smile? Where's that smile? <laughs> Last night, we, what was the show we were talking it was so about? so animated. Yeah. We, we were talking about, I think it was Game of Thrones, right? Yep. And, and yeah, he just... About five he, minutes, yeah. Yeah, you lit up. You just, that was like <laughs> your... That was like, I never, I've never seen that in you before. Uh, he turned his uh, studio lights on, too. Well, I wasn't... I don't know if I was as happy as you think I was. I just <laughs> like the show, I guess. No, you didn't. He seem quite animated when we were talking about Game of Thrones, and now he. Yeah, I, I actually saw him crack a smile. The, yeah. Um, well, I like it when people kill other people. I guess. <laughs> well, then you must be enjoying what's happening in the Mid East, especially if they had it then, coming. Then why aren't you a Republican? <laughs> Well, we don't know what Josh is. Josh has never really stated a political, staked a no, political he has. claim. No he, no, he has. He said he was uh, 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 liberal, I believe. 
Uh, yeah, but I, I find you sometimes a bit agnostic. Would that be a, a, a suitable to say, uh, Josh? Politically, you mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would, I would probably have to place myself in the less leftist camp. Yeah. Uh, because He's agnostic when it comes to the Supreme Court. No, the um, Supreme Court is sure. Uh, 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 yeah. I mean, I guess I would say leftist because economically, that's how I feel, and and I'm not trying to use keywords like the the Tea Party would or anything, but I'm for real, you know, personal, you know, freedoms, and I think sometimes that's why I take stances that the quote unquote liberal group would not like, like whether or not our government can force a privately owned company, whether it be a religious company or not, even to pay for someone's Healthcare services, etc. I yeah. I don't I don't take those stances. Those are liberal stances. But I'm not a liberal. I'm a leftist. I don't believe that we can force private company. I mean, what I'm saying is on issues like that. I believe that the government can do it, mm -hmm. and that the government should do it. Okay, but right. I mean, but I believe that the government can do it, and that we have a constitutional system that would allow it. We just haven't got there yet. So, so I mean, you, that's why so I sometimes would, so take could those you be stances. described as a constitutionalist? What's that? I didn't hear you. Could you be described as a constitutionalist? Well, I'm, I suppose I could. Um, I probably would not like that label because most people that take that label are John Birchers. Are like, yeah, are like Tea Party or type of people who take that label and then what they do is they misrepresent it. Um, they think that they have studied what the founders would do or what the founders have wanted. And I appreciate that they've taken the time to at least try and do more than most Americans, which is think about the founders and the framers. But I think they went to the wrong sources to get their information. Yeah. Um, I think rather than reading history and, you know, a little bit of commentary, they've gotten what information they have from, you know, sources that I wouldn't consider reliable. I mean, if I wanted to learn about the Federalist Papers, for example, I would go read the Federalist Papers. I would not go read a book by Glenn Beck called interpreting the Federalist Papers. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay, uh, yeah. I didn't know that they needed interpreting. I thought they were in English. So, uh, <laughs> did you he know, actually write I guess that's what I'm saying. It's he, a lot of those people that take that label. Did he write something called interpreting the Federalist I, that Papers? That might not be the exact title. That might, that might be the subtitle, but he wrote some sort of... Yeah book along those lines and I, like I said I don't I don't remember the title somebody will probably look it up real quick but but that's why I would shy away from that label and it would scare me is because I I don't want to be thought of in that way but I guess my position is that I will support things that I don't personally believe in if I believe that it's necessary to protect the constitutional freedoms of okay. everybody. Let me ask you I'll this. Take though, the good with the bad. Because I don't believe that the the Constitution is a perfect document, just like I don't believe the Bible is a perfect document. Well, I don't either. Uh, I think uh, the only perfect document is a document that can't be interpreted different ways by different people, but only in one specific way because it is so well written that you can't vary. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I uh, don't I don't consider it perfect well, either. What, what I mean, is, okay, but I want to know because you you, you you're a, a scholar where this is concerned. Tell me something about the Constitution that isn't perfect. Oh well, there are several area, areas, and I'm I think that scholars have identified a couple of the main areas mm -hmm. where um, the Constitution was considered imperfect um i think one of the main ones right off the bat yeah that i'll bring up first because it it relates to some shows that you've had recently is that one of the failures of the of the framers and perhaps it wasn't a failure there is some indication that it was done purposely mm -hmm. is that the constitution is very ambiguous about the exact role of the judicial branch you know one of the great debates is was the judicial branch meant to decide the constitutionality of laws, et cetera, and the way that it does, or were those laws meant to be decided as constitutional or not by the legislature, mm -hmm. see, seeing as the legislature is elected popularly by the people, yeah. and therefore by electing them, the people will have given the legislature their, their, their sovereign blessing, if you will, 
therefore laws that emanate from them are therefore endorsed by the people and you know should be constitutional uh here here's um, the glenn beck book uh <laughs> phil is holding it up to the yeah. screen you can do that again phil because we got the tv up tonight glenn beck the ori for what the original argument yeah uh for the federalist papers oh for right. the federalist papers okay so you know that was one of the original the federalist questions. case for the constitution yeah Right. So, I mean, that, you know, that that's one of the areas they were rather uh, ambiguous. I mean, we got to the point of judicial review that we are at now over a period of time. I mean, obviously, it started with, you know, Marbury v. Madison, um, you know, where the court took up a constitutional issue and, and decided it. And that set the president the precedent. And from there on out, you know, we've we've never diverted. But there is a good amount of argument that that's how the framers wanted it. Um, they argued for judicial review in the Federalist Papers, specifically Hamilton. And at the time the decision happened, when those framers were still alive, we can read their initial reaction from their correspondence and their diaries and their letters and their public statements mm -hmm. that they accepted it. And, you know, they moved on. Very few of them raised any heck. So um, I, I think that that became an accepted practice in that way. But the issue is the Constitution does not specifically say, you know, constitutional cases should be adjudicated through this process right up through the Supreme Court. It basically just says you're going to have a judicial branch made up mm. of a court. Um, and then Congress shall have the power to uh, set that branch up, which they did uh, in the first, con or not Continental Congress, in the first, uh, you know, U.S. Congress when they passed the Judiciary Act, they set it up, and we've evolved from there. So that's one area. See, I, I've, I mean, often, I've often been of a theory that we only need one law in this country, and that law is don't do something that hurts somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> that would just encompass about everything, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, why um, do we it, it, think about it for a second? We had to make a law freeing the slaves, right? Shouldn't that have it. been part of the uh, of the of the Constitution to begin with? Shouldn't wouldn't one of the uh, amendments to the Constitution cover that? No, because the mores of the time mm -hmm. uh, uh, justified uh, slave ownership. It was uh, part of the, uh, the the way the system worked. And, and believed to be normal. Uh, but, but now, we you, don't know. Can you, can you believe that in a country that was created because people came from another country to get away uh, from uh, from uh, uh, the, the, uh, the the leaders in various European countries? I can countries, believe it. It was, uh, that, that, our country that, was created that they, by Puritans. That they, would, that they would also enslave people? That that would be on the agenda? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. right, that... That particular issue was not lost on the people who wrote the Constitution, on the people who endorsed, you know, the Revolution, and on contemporaries at the time. I mean, the issue was argued over at the convention. I mean, you know, no doubt. I mean, it nearly broke the convention up, maybe not over slavery per se, yeah. because they avoided, you know, direct language mm -hmm. um, throughout the convention. But... You know, if you read between the lines, their their sectional arguments were about slavery. That's why the the argument was so heated about representation in the in the two houses of Congress, because the South obviously thought if they lost that battle, the first thing that the first Congress would do would be to remove slavery. So you know, there's a second failure. Um, scholars point to, you know. Uh, uh, the issue to not deal with slavery, you know, was viewed as a as a failure. That you you know the ambiguity on the judiciary is viewed as a failure. Mm -hmm. I mean, the electoral college is viewed as you know less than perfect. Um, yep. You know, I mean, there there are yeah. several issues there, but I think what you can point to is you can say, well, despite all that, yeah, those were some less than perfect things. Um, but in the overall scheme of history, it is probably the most be, perfect, be, if that's a term. Because the thing I hate the you most, know, document okay, the thing I the hate, had. I think I hate the most about the Constitution. It's kind of like the thing I hate the most about the Bible, is those people who want to make a point will interpret things to their uh, to their to their advantage. Um, 
they if it's kind of like the I Ching. I don't know if you remember the I Ching, but you would throw down some coins and then you would go to some place in a book and it would have some ambiguous statement which you then interpreted and uh, it was your fortune. But you would interpret it as you wanted it to come out. And I often feel that way about the uh, the Constitution, that it is specific enough that we know what they were trying to get at, but ambiguous enough that people who don't who would like to bludgeon us with it would would use it and say oh no you know i mean we get to you know we get to the whole thing about the right to bear arms we could argue that till mm -hmm. the next century phil and i and we would he, he would never see it my way and i would never see it his way and we would both be interpreting <laughs> it as well no as we would be interpreting it as we see it mm -hmm. you know sure and yeah, uh, my my argument has always been not really. I think argument, it's the worst amendment we've got. It was one of the worst written. Sure, I can probably accept that it's caused us a lot of strife for sure. Yeah. But you know, my point has always been that um, those imperfections and uh, that you know ambiguity, if you will, has left room for improvement that we can mold to our society as you know the world has changed. Yeah. Um, you know, the, there was only one thing in the Constitution that that was put in um, that, that could not be changed. There's only one part of the Constitution that could absolutely not have been changed. And, of course, that's over with. And that was the provision that the Congress shall make no law to um, prohibit the importation or the of slaves, the slave trade. They didn't use those words. Um, but to stop the slave trade before the year 1808 as part of a compromise to get some things done. That was put in there, and so that was it. You know, that was the only thing that couldn't be changed. You know, and what of I, course you, we you, passed you, that. Yeah, but you know what I what I really enjoyed was the uh, what amendment was prohibition eighteenth? Uh, what? Yeah. Huh? Eighteenth yeah, amendment sounds right. Yeah. Uh, yes, eighteenth. Okay, so you got the eighteenth amendment, right. and it, it, uh, it makes it gives us prohibition. I don't know. Now, which one took repeal prohibition? I don't know if it was the 19th, because I think... 21st, Because I think. somewhere in there came women's uh, rights. Right, no, women's right to vote. Yeah, because that the all... The 21st repealed it. 21st mm -hmm. repealed it. Okay, so if you repealed it, why is it still there? Well, they... You know, if you get um, a copy of the Constitution, prohibition is there. If you say you, you repealed it, shouldn't you... Did we even have to have an amendment for that? Couldn't we just repeal it? They'd have to move the numbers around. Yeah, otherwise you'd have a gap in the, in the amendments. So yeah, but I mean your your point is not um, off the bat because there were some people who thought that that's how it would be. Madison, for example, you know the the so-called father of the Constitution. And I say so-called because I mean he was very important, but I think he's given a little too much credit. That's how he thought it would work. Yeah, you know he thought that each time it was changed that we would do what you said that we would take the old copy and we would uh throw it in the furnace and then we would just make a new copy that said the same exact thing as the old except for the part that we just changed yeah but it's know? a living so, document so maybe by recording the uh the changes and and regarding those changes it uh, continues as a living document yeah sure yeah. If, if you subscribe to the theory that it's a uh, um a living document. I mean, that's the big, you know, current uh, legend, not, not legislative, but, you know, judicial and scholarly argument, law professors, et cetera, is, you know, do you take a view of the Constitution as a, as a living document that does not require a constructionist view, or do you take uh, a constructionist view, you know, which is basically the position of Justice Scalia, if you watch the interview, and he's always held to this interpretation, that he believes, for the most part, any time that it's physically possible to do it, you should go back and you should find out, you know, what the framers meant when they wrote the words. Mm -hmm. You should study the words specifically, yeah. find out exactly what they meant, and then apply that to our modern society if it's applicable, you oh. know. And then there are others, typically, uh, if you want to call them leftists, that's fine, you know, judges, mm -hmm. et cetera. But this is why I've always argued it's not political, it's a matter of interpretation, who take the opposite view, that it is not a constructionist view that is required. They, they believe that that's not possible. They believe that there wasn't really any more consensus during 
the time the Constitution was written than there is today. It just happened to be they got enough votes to squeak it through and pass it. And therefore, as times, people, society all changes, we should be able to adapt, adjust. The Constitution is necessary. And they try and take it. And they still look at those same things, mm. but they don't give them as, as heavy a weight as someone like Justice Scalia would. And they try and interpret the Constitution more on the, the current basis rather than on the 1787 88, 89 basis. Okay, let me ask... So, Josh, little, uh, I'm uh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say to Jim, oh. was there slavery in Canada? Uh, no, not really, because this was one of the... This was sort of the final destination of the Underground Railroad. Yeah. That's where you went to get away from slavery. Well, oh, okay. yeah, because of your French and British settlement, and I believe that they had outlawed slavery long before... Yep. How, about, how about indentured servitude? You know, because that was something we, we don't talk much about, but like in Boston. That was a European or, thing. 64, sorry. In, in Boston, uh, there were a lot of indentured servants. And but a lot that of had the, nothing to do with race. It had nothing uh, to do with slavery. race. You're right. You're right. But uh, still. It, it was a tradesman's uh, 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 a way of getting a vocation and, and moving from Europe to. No, it wasn't uh, exactly that. It was a way of people get people for almost next to nothing. They wanted to come to the United States, and so they'd pay their way if they would then go into indentured servitude for a certain amount of time. But they became a journeyman, uh, which allowed them to uh, practice a trade, usually. They were indentured servant of someone, not necessarily I, I thought it was a more, maid or a butler. I, I thought it was more odious than that. You know. uh, yeah, it could have yeah. been cobbler. Well, no, indentured servitude was different. I mean, but that, so, I mean, we didn't outlaw slavery here until, uh, well, I guess what, 1865? 65. Yeah. yeah, so uh, what, they passed the amendment in January. I said 65, then I said 64. I guess not, I've decided 65. So, but, you know, the thing about that, you know, that I've never understood in current times, and this is where I think when we fail to really look at history, yeah, um, or I think we look at it, I think we just choose to ignore it sometimes. Is I mean, for example, the the hero of the right, you know, is yeah. is Abraham Lincoln. Okay, uh, Ronald Reagan, yeah, I know, but I mean, you know, they they hold Lincoln up a lot. I mean, everybody does, but the right typically likes to do that. Um, you know, because he was a Republican, yeah, but, even but, though but, they but, failed. That was Republican. Those were well, real that's, rhinos that's, yeah, because there was, was no say, established. Things were liberal. Huh? Uh, Josh, can I ask a question to Josh uh, yeah. and ask him to compare uh, someone like uh, uh, the uh, Bork, who was very, very right wing uh, and so forth. How would he have fit into well, uh, the Supreme Court if he would have been uh, selected? But let me say first of all that Bork, in case people don't know, is the sound that is made by a fart in a bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, he was a scholar, and uh, you know, how how do you feel uh, that he would have uh, changed the court, or would he have changed it at all? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's. That's probably difficult for me to say because, I mean, I, I'm i not, you know, completely familiar with his... I mean, I know about the issues that came up a little bit and, you know, the hard time that he had and everything, but it's, you know, it's so hard to say. I mean, he did seem, I guess, to me to be a, a little bit over the top. I mean, I'm usually willing to let a president pick a justice, and I mean, literally, you know, as long as the guy isn't you know, completely, you know, I mean, they don't have him like, you know, on tape at a Klan rally wearing the white hood or, you know, yeah. I mean, something just crazy like that, you well, know, I mean, nothing explosive, you know, a president should usually, usually get what he wants because that's, you know, that's the way it works. He's, he was elected. So uh, well, I, don't, I, I was looking maybe, you know, as uh, how his opinions would have made made a difference, but if uh, because Robert Bork uh, said that uh, the the reasons he was having issues was that he was trying to get his students to think, and he wrote some controversial papers uh, trying to uh, you know well, uh, in, in in a situation why are, why are you, an education and, and situation. I know you've done this on several occasions, Phil. Why are you beating the drum for Bork? I mean, well, it's that too is late. such I an mean, old uh, such. A, how long, think, how long ago was the Bork, the Bork nomination? I, I know, uh, Alex, I know he's selling reverse mortgages right now on uh, the cable stations, but, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I thought... Is he, he really? Like, I didn't no, know that. No. Oh. Well, I, I don't even know I if mean, he's if, alive. 
<laughs> if that if that was indeed his um, motivation, and uh, maybe people just didn't believe him, I mean, I guess you would have to look into whether or not he was genuinely telling you the truth there. I mean, if that was his motivations was to get his students to think, I don't have a problem with that because I often think that the job of college professors is to say things um, as long as it's prefaced with I'm about to, you know, make you think here, you know, to have a devil's advocate uh, position, if you will. You know, so, I mean, that's fine. But but what I was going to say before you got to that about Lincoln was, you know, and we were talking about the Constitution and modern politics and everything, you know, and the right holds Lincoln up as a hero. I mean, show me where he had the power constitutionally to free the slaves. You know, I mean, you know, they talk about Obama, and, and all I'm saying is their hero of the right, Lincoln, perhaps— stretch the limits of executive power constitutionally more than anyone else. Now, I happen to agree with what he did, but I'm just saying, you know, show me in there where he could suspend habeas corpus because he wanted to, even though it, it says pretty clearly only Congress can suspend habeas corpus. You know, show me where he could say, you know what, we're at war and the slaves are all free. Emancipation, there you go. You know, I mean, show me where he could have, you know, people uh, arrested and basically jailed, uh, you know, uh, humanely, but, you know, jailed for going out and saying, don't join, uh, the, burn your draft card, don't join the war. I, I, mean, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, so what I'm saying yeah, is... Yeah, but I, I don't know, do, do the Republicans, and let me ask you this, uh, because you're the, the most Republican in the room, Phil, followed by Patrick, who, you know, is semi-rhino. Um... Uh, it, it, Pat, Pat uh, but uh, do you do, do the Republicans think of of Lincoln as this great Republican? Because when the Republican Party was established, and I, I believe he was the second candidate for president, I think the first one was, if I'm not mistaken, what John Fremont. I, 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 oh, uh, I, I, he might have been nominated right, yeah. Before yeah, that, yeah. I, I think they ran somebody yeah. in um, and they lost. 56. And they I lost. think so. Yeah, yeah and I think it was Fremont. Uh, from California, and then um, uh, then they ran Lincoln. Now the party hadn't really established itself. You know, you couldn't say they were right or they were left at that point. You know, I think before that you had Whigs and Tories, and what was there anything else? Well, just Whigs and, and Democrats. Yeah, were the were the two main parties. And, but and, I mean, and the Republicans the kind thing of replaced about that period of politics. Though is nothing was really left or right. Yeah, I mean everything and that basically that last decade up until the election of 1860 I mean there was really nothing left or right everything was pro slavery anti slavery basically yeah i mean you know i mean i'm reading a book right now i mean this before we came on the air the political crisis of the 1850s i mean covers pretty well the fact that you know uh, the, the the author's making an argument that's just basically says the Civil War wasn't caused by sectional issues of slavery. It was caused by the collapse of what's called the second party system in America. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is, is when that party system of Whigs and Democrats collapsed and we spent a couple years basically in limbo without two major parties because the Republican Party was a new, weak party, people lost faith in the political system and felt like the only way to solve their problems was war. Makes a pretty good argument. But... Um, but everything in that period was basically, I mean, it, that was the only issue. Uh, you know, that's why politicians now, I don't really see why they try to identify themselves with political parties of the past. You know, like, if so-and-so were alive today, he would be a such-and-such. -such. I just don't think it works that way. To answer Alex's question, uh, I think Republicans today look at Lincoln as a symbol, not necessarily that the uh, issues that he stood for represent today's uh, Republican, but uh, they uh, look at it as uh, no more than a mascot uh, that they can uh, bring forward and say, hey, he was a Republican. But it, I think it's a stretch uh, that uh, in, in modern times, uh, he'd it'd be no different if he was a Cadillac instead of a Lincoln. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I've got, I've got, let's change this. Oh, you, you want to say something, Patrick? Let me have yeah, it, Patrick. I just wanted did. to add, uh, as Phil was explaining, um, Josh, you know, heading back to the past, and Lincoln, basically, I agree with what Phil says, that just holding him up as kind of a mascot, 
But I got an email the other day, speaking of the past, and now the Republican Party, and I don't know if it's strictly in Wisconsin or if it's the Republican Party at the National, mm -hmm. they're sending out emails, and I got an email that I could order my new bumper sticker yeah. that said Romney was right, and it's got Romney's logo on it again. I mean, to me, that's just the same as anybody that still got a George W. Bush sticker on their truck, or <laughs> anybody with a Clinton sticker, or a Gore sticker, <laughs> yeah. and now we're bringing up new stickers for somebody who lost. I I'm, have a Nixon Lodge button. <laughs> yeah. You wear it? Uh, not often. <laughs> but the, it, uh, they, there was, I remember there was a great bumper sticker when Nixon and Lodge were running together. And it read, The Last Resort Nixon Lodge. <laughs> 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 Let me bring something else up here. Uh, and this is an interesting one. I'm going to read This was an op-ed in today's uh, New York Times. Ooh, what page? I'll go to it right now. <laughs> but anyway. Here it is. There, you see it? Okay. It says, American citizens are paying 535 people to take care of the legislative needs of the country. We're getting shortchanged. Here's an example. On June 10th, an incumbent congressman in Virginia lost a primary election in which his opponent garnered only 36,105 votes. Immediately, many Washington legislators threw up their hands and declared that this one event would produce paralysis in the United States Congress for at least five months. In particular, they're telling us that immigration reform, long overdue, is now hopeless. Americans deserve better than this. The three of us vary in our politics, but we would differ in our preferences about the details of an immigration reform bill. But we could, without doubt, come together and draft a bill acceptable to each of us. We hope that fact holds a lesson. You don't have to agree on everything in order to cooperate on matters about which you are reasonably close to agreement. It's time this brand of thinking finds its way to Washington. Now, you you're you're looking at it right now, um, uh, Josh. So don't mm -hmm. don't uh, ruin the test here. <laughs> Who do you uh, think you know, these three it, people are that wrote this? Uh, Anybody want to hazard a guess? I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at it right now. Uh, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates. And Sheldon Adelson. Sheldon Adelson? Yep. Do you mm -hmm. know if that election would have went the other way, the Congress would have been paralyzed for six months <laughs> instead of five? <laughs> You're not getting the point we're trying to make here. Here are three guys <laughs> who are, A, multimillionaires, uh, mega billionaires, actually, uh, uh, Buffett, Gates, and Adelson, and they're uniting for amnesty. They say, we may go about it differently, we may argue about the varying degrees of it, but we're not going to take a no as the answer, that there should be amnesty. That's They're the ones that are bankrolling all the candidates. Why can't they <laughs> make them do something? Well, they're not, no, uh, you know, Adelson is bankrolling some, but... Uh, 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 it's really a good question of, of and, and I don't think Gates backs candidates. And, and I, does Buffett? I don't think he does I, either. I, I don't, does I, Buffett? No. I don't, I don't know, but I don't think they're considered, you know. Well, I think what they're doing is they're, they're big time at there. least, uh, Adelson does back candidates. There's no question about that. But I just think that it's unusual that these uh, three people came together with the same common appeal mm -hmm. that amnesty is the, I the ideal of what we have to look for here and what's going on at our borders. Aren't Buffett and, uh, and Gates uh, very uh, similar in their uh, political bent? You know, I don't know exactly where Gates is politically. I would say he's probably left-leaning. Yeah. Buffett is definitely left-leaning, at least economically. Um, uh, he has always, you know, spoken out for for liberal causes in that in that uh, in that area.
But Adelson is as right wing as you get. I mean, yeah. you know, every 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 uh, guy who's running for political office is uh, oh, down there in where Las Vegas, uh, meeting up with Abel Adelson and kissing his ass, uh, P Patrick. <laughs> Uh, I know that Glenn Beck is getting a lot of flack from his base, uh, his listeners, because he's sending several semis down to where those kids are at, full of uh, teddy bears, soccer balls, and water, and food. Um, and a lot I was gonna, of I was going to say you can't you can't eat a teddy bear and a soccer ball. No, but if it's being requested, the frick is it. Yeah. It, it's being requested by um, some of the church groups down there. They're asking for donations, so he's actually doing this. And he's gotten a number of tweets from listeners that are just apoplectic that he would even consider uh, helping out these kids. You know, now he's uh, kind of like kissing the president's ass because he's going <laughs> along with the... Uh, idea that these kids should probably eat and you know that sort of thing so um you know i i think this border issue isn't just black and white with you know left or right like yeah. your uh, like your op-ed is saying i mean you've got somebody like beck who would normally maybe fall way to the right on this this particular case is different why do you think beck is doing it when when I, I I always I always think of ulterior motives here when it comes yeah, to Beck. Yeah. I, it was a friend of mine posted the article on Facebook. Yeah. And he wrote, even if there is an underlying ulterior motive, it doesn't matter because when, for one, he's helping the kids. Yeah. So who gives a shit? Because I don't believe in altruism anyway. I think anybody who does anything for anybody. It expecting something in return. I saw a photo of how these kids are uh, uh, stacked up in rooms, and if this photo isn't just a uh, you know one piece to make you uh, upset, uh, they're they're living almost in squalor. And uh, you know, whenever someone is being detained uh, by uh, government or police or anyone, they're in our charge, and we have a an obligation. Uh, to make sure that uh, they're not abused. Well, you and, know, <laughs> you know something. Uh, when you talk about people all living in the same room together, uh, this has not been unusual for these people, even once they get here. I mean, uh, th there are places in San Rafael, California, for instance, I know, where there are 10 people living to a room because they're doing it, not because they're not getting paid enough or because they're not making enough money, but because they want to spend as little as possible so they can send it back home to their families. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one of those Facebook pictures, and when I saw all of those kids yeah. uh, just about on top of one another, uh, it, it's it's not a it, it was there was no hygiene there was uh, no nothing well, this is no way for people to live. My argument well, is why aren't we saying to the you know we've got to remember the Mexican government uh, is a government in which the rich are very rich and the poor are very poor, and that has been a a, a, a system for years now in which there is basically an oligarchy in Mexico and everyone else be damned. Why do we sit here and do nothing to complain to Mexico about the way they're treating their people? Because, because it becomes our problem. That's why these, these people aren't coming here because, oh, America is the most wonderful place in the world. They'd rather stay at home with their families. But we're, if we're at home, they're getting killed by gangs. They're, getting, uh, they, 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 they're thrown into po abject poverty by the governments uh, that will make the rich rich. You know. They're our Palestinians. Uh, you know, if you, if you think about it, uh, they, they're uh, but they're in our charge. We're we're holding them in custody, and yeah. because of that, uh, we need to respond and make sure that they get the basics and uh, food, water, and and hygiene uh, that uh, that that you give anyone that's being held in custody. Yeah, but I mean, I just think that that. We have never done enough to encourage those governments 
to do something about this. Instead, but it's we no have a different. Lot it's not really a government. They may have a president. They may have well, all we have the trappings oh, Mexico, of a government. Mexico's had a government. I know, but they're no different than uh, than uh, the Iraqi government. Uh, it's a government that's not a government. The word, uh, where, because where, if they if they were, they would they would they would take care of the where, people. Where was it? I was watching a report from the other night, uh, Honduras, I think, <laughs> where the problem is is drug lords, you know, and drug gangs. And kids being forced into joining the drug gangs. And you don't think that their government is complicit? Otherwise, why don't they just napalm the Well, why uh, aren't we why aren't we doing fields? something to talk to those 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 governments and saying, we're not gonna do business with you until you solve this problem? Because what you're doing to us is you're you're literally exporting your problem to us. You know? Uh, Patrick. The the person that I'm most disappointed in with dealing with the Mexican government. Besides it, Obama? It, well, no, it's George W. Bush. Yeah. Because he and Vincente Fox, oh, I believe, were... were very good friends. Yeah. And I, I never understood why those two, if they were as close as they are, um, why the hell couldn't they have sat down man to man and just you know without all their bullshit people around them mm. and sit and go you know what the fuck we need to fix this because number one i don't want all of my people running north to you because you know we could have business here in mexico mm. uh and i don't want all your people running north to us because we can't afford to have them all let's figure something out and i think that's one of Bush's biggest failures in my mind uh, as far as domestic policy. Or I guess it could be called uh, international. But, um, you know, with the closeness between those two, or supposed closeness, there should have been something. Well, but he didn't because he was always kissing Vicente Fox's ass and he was never doing anything to say, hey, by the way, what are you going to do to stop this problem well, that we're getting? Right. Now, mind Fox, you... Fox probably didn't have the power to do that. There, he, he was nothing more than a, than, uh, a figurehead. And he's being ruled by, uh, by the uh, uh, cartels. No, not by the cartels. Are you kidding me? Not, they're uh, not the, the, uh, the drug lords. They're not the me. richest people in, in Mexico, the drug lords. No, but they've got uh, they've got more weapons and uh, more firepower yeah. than his own and, and uh, why police. Do, why do they have that firepower, by the way? Why are are we uh, just uh, buying it from the Russians? Yeah, I mean, but what, what are they fighting over? What are they uh, fighting they're, they're over? They're protecting their uh, investments. Uh, yeah, what what, what, inve what investments is that? What what drugs, drugs. are those? Drugs. What drugs? Marijuana. Uh, yeah. Only mar ninety eight percent marijuana. Not cocaine. No. If if you uh, uh, ninety eight percent of the of the drugs they're trying to control coming over the border is pot, we legalize it here. You got no problem. You've taken the the uh, the money out of it, and we don't do that. We don't take the sensible way out. So we created that problem along the border just by our own uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Our own prudish interests. No, uh, Jesus Pat, didn't tell oh, uh, Jesus didn't tell Bush to talk to him to do that. So uh, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, Jesus you know, was getting stoned. <laughs> hey guys, I want to break this up, but I got to head dash out. Yeah. Okay. I got to get ready. Okay. So, continue on. I'll be listening. Thank you, Jim. We could use somebody to replace Jim. We have a rather uh, actually small amount here. We have five uh, people plus me, so that's six. So we could use some people. Give us a call. There's still time to call. Great American Broadcast. We would love to hear from you. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bill, do you really believe that somebody like Vincente Fox would not have the ability to grow a pair of balls and be the president? If, if mean, he has the ability, he certainly didn't, uh, he didn't use it. That is my point, is when you're president of any country and... The only exception I will give is Iran, because that is a well-known, <laughs> it's run by the Ayatollah, and the president is a figurehead. But the people in Mexico elect the president. There is no other governing body like there is in Iran. So I'm looking at Mexico the same as I would the United States, and or Canada for that matter, and go, 
why isn't the prime minister, why isn't the president actually doing something? And I think Vincente Fox, and, and I forget the guy's name now, I don't think they really give a shit. Right. And I think I, that's yeah. the I, I, they, they, they're, they're happy. They stay in their position of power, mm -hmm. and they don't get assassinated as long as they don't screw with those people. You know what? I didn't even buy that argument. What I, I do I think they don't give a shit, and I think it's up to our government, whether it was Bush, and I, he failed miserably at it, or now Obama, to actually put the screw to Mexico. Unfortunately, Bush was more interested in his accent and how he came across speaking Spanish than he was in the content of what he was saying. No, but, how do you put the screws to Mexico? I don't know. And that's, yeah. that's, that's the part where... No me, tortillas. Well, <laughs> Mexico, by, by the way, Mexico is not the only country that's the problem down there. I mean, the, 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 the uh, death train travels all the way from Bolivia. Yeah. And along the way, it passes through Guatemala and it passes through Mexico and it passes through a lot of different places at which people pick up the train. What I don't understand is why right now this influx of children? Why did it happen now? Did we it's say covering up something no, else? No, did we say something that suddenly drew no. them here? Did we say we were going to close the borders or we were going to do something? I, I believe that it's a uh, a cover up for some other situation that's going on and it could be the balance of uh of uh illegal immigrants that what they're trying to do is if they can establish amnesty for the children then then maybe they can establish amnesty for the rest of the 11 million that are hanging out well you know i i just uh, uh, josh you 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 read the paper a lot you've got the times right in front of you what is the reason why now i mean we haven't had this we didn't have this problem six months ago where there was this uh, influx of kids, kids, not adults, but kids across the border. Um, my understanding, uh, I believe, was that the the height or the the rise in this activity was brought about by the the smugglers who uh, convinced these people they can get their kids across the border. It's just been a slow growing business. You mean the coyotes? Um, yeah, if that's what you want to call, yeah, them. Um, call them. I don't even know if you want to call them that because they don't really take them across the border because nope. these are people that are not trying to enter illegally. They're just they're they're physically trying to be picked up by border patrol. You know, they're basically just like guides that take them to the border and then show them where to cross so the border patrol will see them and pick them up because they're not adults. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you pick up a thirty-year-old guy who's in healthy condition, yeah. you know, the border patrol may you know pick them up go through a short process and send them back but they're not going to do that with a with a 13 year old girl you know so they're basically uh, i mean the way i understood it was you know there's been this influx because you know these smugglers it's just been a growing business and it's like as it started to work as they got this idea a while ago it's been slowly building up and you know business is picking up you know it's in demand now because it's been working and they've been convincing them that you know for for whatever i can show people the way and you know we'll get them up there and then all they have to do is basically run across the border and the border patrol pick them up and you know they're going to let them in you know and, you know yeah. you never know well, what probably i've heard not about your kids I, for a I while, saw but... a report on nbc again because nbc was doing these constant reporting uh, reports with this chris jansen is her name and uh mm -hmm. uh she's down there and she's been following this, and in some towns that uh, along the route, she they actually were chased out of town because the kind of trade that was going on in that town they didn't want to have on television, which is the trade in human beings in in, in getting them to pay coyotes to mm -hmm. uh, grease the wheels, so to speak. Do you know how much they're right. paying those coyotes? Upwards right. to five thousand dollars a head. It's right. the floor now, covering business. where do they which get is, five grand which, to begin with? Which I think is another reason for it. Um, I mean, if I, if I if I don't understand this right, you know, forgive me, but I mean, this is the way that I took it. Another reason that it's higher than what it was all of a sudden is because as business has picked up and as word has gotten out, what you've now had is you've had these a lot of children basically hearing about this and finding out that these guides and these coyotes, you know, take you up there, et cetera. They don't have the money and they've begun to freelance it. They've begun to say, well, look, 
all I got to do is get to the American border. I don't have to know the special place to cross where Border Patrol isn't, etc. Yeah. I just have to get there and let them see me on the wrong side. So I'll just do it on my own. I mean, I took it that a lot of these children are actually coming here and making this journey unaccompanied. You know, they may have a few friends or something, but they're, they're, they're unaccompanied. by themselves. But, they're but, not but, being but, escorted. But I, I heard about this one area between Mexico and, and the United States. It's almost like, uh, uh, I forget what the, they call it the Badlands or the Deathlands or whatever, that they try to travel through, and many of them die doing it because of the heat and no water. And uh, I'm just wondering why they aren't taking a more interesting route well <laughs> i think a route i there think was a one rancher. of the reasons well i think one of the reasons is is that they're trying to stay hidden from smugglers etc that they haven't paid who will pick them up and virtually sell them into slavery if you will mm -hmm. to drug traffickers uh drug operations sex traffickers um the girls are sexually assaulted quite often if they're found wandering alone by you know men right um you know but i mean they'll you know they'll they'll basically be kidnapped, which is why they're trying to travel through well, remote area. Yeah, but these are and, also and avoid people. Detection. We have to understand this. I mean, when we when we look at this situation, these are people who are willing to die to get here. Mm -hmm, exactly. Uh, and and th what is driving that so strongly? I mean, it do, must be. Do you really think that they're it's that they're willing to die, or it's well, that well, they once get they into get a here, once, situation where there's no return? Once they get here, you know, this wonderful yeah. land of promise, where do they wind up standing in front of Home Depot? You I know, they just sold oh. a bill of goods as to what there is here. They, you know, what does it take to, 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 to promise all this stuff? And I read an article last week on Albert's show when I was filling in that they're that they're they're putting false information that the united states government is is, is accepting these kids there's like amnesty and so they're forcing them north and these these traffickers are collecting these kids and selling them for eight thousand bucks a head who so, do they sell them to uh to i don't know who they sell them to but they're supposedly you know making a ton of money selling these kids so what do we do that's the question, you know. Uh, th that's the question that's posed by Adelson and Gates and and uh, uh, and Buffett. Uh, Drop the price to six thousand know, dollars. We, we all, volume. Uh, th th as they put it, we <laughs> all agree on what the problem is. We all agree on the humanitarian answer to this problem. We just don't have a method. How about going down there and s trying to break the the uh, propaganda? You know, get to these people to say, "Look, this is not what you're you're hearing that it is." Well, one or once you get here, what do you expect? Now, I you think, think you I think they're going to believe us. I, I think where kids are concerned, <laughs> where kids are concerned, we know what we're going to do unless we're heartless. Okay, we're going to do something about those kids. Uh, we're, Either, we're, I mean, are we going to put them up for adoption? What are we going to do with them? I mean, well, we're going to feed. That's what them. they've been doing. They're putting them up for adoption, right? Yeah, there are there are Mexican um, or foster not Mexican, Guatemalan, Honduran uh, immigrants who are in this country basically legally, uh, and there are a large number of them, and they've been agreeing to uh, to take them. Some of them are taking two or three, you know, uh, and they're trying times... to place them. My understanding is they're trying to place, you know, Mexican kids in a home with you know, a Mexican man and woman that are here legally, you know, to try and help them assimilate easier. You know, it's, they're not trying to stick them with, you know. They don't speak the language. So it, if you, it, you know, you know I'm, I, I'm just thinking about it, you know, and I, I of course, I, 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 with like Gabnet and so on, I, I keep thinking of ways to make money. And I'm thinking, Rob, tell me if I'm off the mark <laughs> here, since you're one of the Gabnet family, why don't we start a reality show? in which kids come on and show how they can clean houses and how they can m m hoe gardens. Uh, Mencina already yeah, had yeah, uh, yeah. And a, then a people, people call in and adopt them. What a great idea. Uh -huh. On a Friday night when the cameras are on, exactly. the cute kids. Uh, what do I Put need? Them on what do I, what do I need the bunch of you here? We just have a bunch of really hungry looking kids and people phoning in and saying, I'll adopt the one on the left. And you have to talk like the guy on those infomercials, you know, and you have to talk like this. Wouldn't you like to take care of, just for pennies a day? Just for pennies a day, you could take care of little Jose. 
And uh, yeah, no, but I mean, uh, you know, and then they, they, they just show their talents, you know, like, uh, hey, I, I can buff a car real well, you know, and things like that. <laughs> what, what, what do you, wait, you got your hand over your, uh, your uh, face. Uh, oh, you don't want to look like you're laughing, Patrick? You know, it, it, it's... I, was that tasteless? Did I go too far? <laughs> Bencina had a, had, a, had a video about uh, get a yob, Y-O-B. Yeah. And and it was. Uh, and by the way, who did he steal that from? I don't know. Mancina is the biggest. Th 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 Mancina is the biggest thief in the business. I, I understand. It was hilarious, though, and uh, it was it was teaching Americans how they could get jobs in in this economy just by acting like a Mexican, and uh, <laughs> so it was it was hilarious. Had you seen that a few years ago? What? Men that Mancina bit? I, I never watch Mancina. If I want to watch Mancina, I go to the original source. Uh, this had to be his, yeah. unless he stole it from some other Mexican. Yeah. Um, uh, you, but listen, look who lives down in Texas. And he hasn't said a word about this. You got, you got this immigrant problem is your problem down there, right? Well, uh, Austin's pretty far from the border. So <laughs> it's a problem for Texas, but not, not for Austin. Yeah, but you get up there around where El, El Paso and down along that area, and yeah. um, and and they, they do have the problem there. So it is Texas's yeah. problem, and Arizona and California. Yeah, but I, I think it's everywhere's problem, though. I mean, Columbus, Ohio, where I work at yeah. every day, has a huge, a massive mexican population well, god knows we've had to Massive. like we god knows we've had to stop those canadians from coming down here <laughs> oh absolutely <laughs> you know but i mean i mean look how far away that is i mean they you know they get to where you know they believe that the work will be because this area for a long time was you know um Rust there was belt? a lot of housing construction going on yeah. here yeah there is a ton of warehousing in columbus ohio i, I mean how you think idea. i'm employed i just thought of an, a, a way you to know? solve the problem what we do is when they come over the border we say come with us and then we lead them to the canadian border and then we just shove them over to that side <laughs> right. so, hey uh, hello but, miranda hello. they have to be americans to go to canada i still have your yub yub up but uh, we hear your lovely voice i'm not getting anyone's video tonight uh, really yeah Everyone's yeah. spinning. There must be a Every must be a game going on over at uh, over at your uh, ballpark there. Ah, uh, <laughs> is there? That's you, a good question. Because I don't you think always there is. you always say your bandwidth gets affected by uh, a lot of times by a game being there. No, it's it, it, it's it's not necessarily the games. Something get, goes wonky during games sometimes. It's not every time. Yeah. Miranda, Phil here. Yeah, they're uh, on the road. You, did you uh, uh, talk about uh, the uh, Dodgers and the uh, 14 million that they had to pay to stow? Uh, no, I haven't discussed that anywhere yet. Oh, okay. Well, might, yeah, I, I might, I, wanna... might I bring up something sports-wise, which I have to do every now and then, as you know, to maintain my sports inning. <laughs> um, tonight I'm watching the news, and the first story is, uh, b -b 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 I think it was, was it Israel? Eh, it might have been Israel. And the next story was uh, the, the immigration thing. And then there was another story <laughs> about something else. Finally, they come up to the story of uh, the uh, wonderfulness that is... Uh, <laughs> Um, LeBron James and yep. his uh, his uh, uh, go decide his decision to go back to the Cleveland Cavaliers which oh, if I gonna... were from Cleveland I'd tell him to blow me you know but anyway this report goes on I swear to you it was longer than any other story on the newscast I mean the thing must have gone on for five minutes Oh, here's the Middle East. They got problems. See the bombs coming in? Boom, boom, boom. Here's a report from so-and-so. Hi, the bombs are coming in. Bye. Next story. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Next story. Boom, 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 boom. Now let's talk about LeBron James. Well, what do you think? And they're going around and interviewing people. I mean, come on. Where's our priorities when we're doing news in this country? You got it right there. Sensational. Hey, at least they didn't give him uh, the lead story. You got to at least give that much. It wasn't a lead story. Yeah, but they were probably sitting there uh, at the at NBC arguing whether it should be the lead story or not. Probably. 
What do you What do you think, Miranda? I honestly don't care. I know I don't care either about LeBron James. And I I just don't care about basketball. It's not one of my sports. It, it, what, what What is it about basketball you don't like? Because I would probably I'd rather play it than watch it. Oh, very good, very good. Being the sporty type that you are. Uh, uh, I'm. I'd rather castrate myself than watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you can say that because you wouldn't feel it. Well, that, that, yes, he would. It, it's yeah, easy to say when you won't, wouldn't feel it. That, that's true, but I'm the only one that can say I could do that and not feel it. <laughs> uh, but I, I just when I, when I saw that happen tonight, I went, my God, you know. I mean, I know the LeBron. I mean, I, absolutely, the LeBron James story probably should have been on the newscast, but not taking up more time than any other story. Well, the, the reason NBC the reason news or the local Channel Four news. Hmm? This was NBC or the local. No, this was Channel NBC. 4. This was Brian, Mister uh, Eyebrows, right over the place, yeah. Eyebrows that okay. uh, go down, uh, Williams. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I asked uh, uh, Miranda about the uh, Dodgers and. Uh, uh, what they had to pay is that it, it was interesting to me that someone gets beat up in a parking lot by uh, by one of the fans, and I believe it was outside the stadium, yeah. and they blame uh, and put uh, blame on the team, uh, and they're paying a significant amount of the fine. Where it should uh, be. Really? Why is that? My favorite, you know, it happened with my favorite team, but it did happen on their property. The team sh is responsible, specifically the owner of the team, at the time, and the little fucker got off. How? What do you McCourt, mean? McCourt, it doesn't have like they absolved Frank McCourt. What the hell? Oh, oh, yeah. How but is they... that slimy bastard getting away with everything? I don't know. <laughs> I must have hit a chord. <laughs> you certainly did. <laughs> um, she is. She, you, 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 oh, ah, there we go. There, there you, you are. are. Yub yub. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, it's, it, it, yeah, you're there. Yeah, she's okay. Uh, uh, you're, you're very dogmatic when it comes to sports, man. That's one thing that really gets you going. Well, yeah. It, it's, it, I was raised in a baseball family. It's, it's, it's one of my passions. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. See, now, yeah, I was raised in a boxing family. My father loved boxing. He didn't like baseball. You know, uh, I didn't go to baseball games or football games when I was a kid. Uh, I was taken to the symphony, you know. Uh, but uh, Another one of my passions. Y yeah, <laughs> but my, my father, my father loved boxing. And he would watch it like every Friday night. They had the Friday night fights in those days because it was cheap television. And uh, my father would sit there, watch. I mean, just he would, he was like, glued to this new thing called television watching boxing and i asked him one day i said dad you're the most nonviolent person i know how can you why do you watch boxing he says because i like to watch two guys get into a ring beat each other's brains out and be glad i'm neither of them <laughs> very good reasoning i guess you know but he loved boxing but um um uh you know why I never got into baseball and why I never got into football is that in those days, when I was growing up in the 50s in California, actually in the 40s, because I was a kid in the 40s. Oh, so well, you didn't have a team. Didn't have a team. We had, you know, we had what? The San Francisco, uh, what were they? Seals. Seals. The San Francisco Seals. And uh, you had the, 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 the young Joe DiMaggio, right? I think it was the Oakland Acorns. Uh, no, I'll think of it. It's... Um... But they were—they uh, were, was an Oakland team. Though. They were all the farm teams, basically. I mean, DiMaggio started with the Seals, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, but we never had, you know, we never had that kind of thing. I always, I'm always very jealous of kids who grew up in New York and had this allegiance to like the the Dodgers. You know, was it the Oakland Oaks? Oakland Oaks, that was it. That was should have been an easy one for me to remember. You know, my dad actually grew up uh, out here in the L.A. area, and uh, this was before uh, the Brooklyn Dodgers relocated to Los Angeles. Yeah. And he was still, at that time, a, a diehard Dodgers fan. Mm. The, 
one of, you know, the second best day of his life was when it was announced that the Dodgers were coming to Los Angeles. Th that was an absolute seed change in baseball in this country. Up yeah. until that time, you could not really go across the Mississippi and find any team playing Major League Baseball. Right. And uh, uh, when, they, when they moved the team to L.A., they only did it because they were able to convince the New York um, um, uh, Giants. Oh, be right, yeah. The New York Giants to move to San Francisco. Yeah, right. they had to have two teams so, out there. So they would have two teams out there. So team, Giants. So teams would be forced to travel out there. And, of course, in the intervening years, we got teams in Phoenix and we got teams in, you know, a lot of cities uh, besides uh, uh, the West Coast. But that was a big sea change. Up until that point, we, we, if you were a kid growing up in California, you didn't care about baseball, you didn't care about football, really didn't care about basketball either. Um, uh, I don't know what we cared about, but kids never talked about baseball teams particularly. Wow, that's all we talked about now. Yeah. Well, you know, a kid who lived in Brooklyn, in many cases, all the guys that played on the Brooklyn team lived in Brooklyn. Yeah. So a kid would walk down the street, and there would be one of the players walking by. You know, I, I have a Brooklyn Dodgers jacket yeah. uh, that I bought. You know, it's Brooklyn Dodgers because I was born there. You know. Well, you know, my I, my friend Steve Gruberg, who God bless him, is left this uh, planet um, or he's buried in it. Um, <laughs> it, it he was one of the biggest Brooklyn fans of all time he was like a Dodger uh, he was like the head of the, the, the there was a bunch of kids who had the Dodger support group right you know fan group and he was like one of the heads of it and everything and all of a sudden one day the Dodgers say we're moving to California he said it was the most horrible day of his life yeah. because he was be it was like like having a parent abandon you yeah i can't imagine my team picking up and leaving we yeah. got the mets <laughs> <laughs> y yes you did joker uh, Gragiola years ago had a joke about the mets he said uh their, their their games are exciting because when a big pop fly goes up from the other team you don't know who's going to miss catching it <laughs> <laughs> and for years, Jeez. for the years, the Mets did very well in attendance. They were just, uh, they, they, they would sell out games because the team was so goddamn bad. And you had something to root for so that once they would win, you would go, wow, you know, that's terrific. Didn't they have a theme song? Well, all of a sudden, Mets? one Beat year. the Mets, right. Yeah, one yeah. year, they win the pennant, and the next year, nobody comes out to see the games. You know, everybody loved the loser there for a while. Uh, and uh, do we have any lovable losers in the sports today? Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> Who? Oh, Sterling. Yeah. I thought you meant John Sterling. Uh, he's the announcer for the Yankees. Yep. Uh, did you work with him at WMCA? I certainly did. And... Uh, uh, I'll tell you, he's one of the craziest men I've ever known in my life. He talks to himself. I mean, out loud, carrying on vociferous conversations. And and one night, day, I hear him like in the uh, there's an airlock between the studio and the and the control room, and the door is open, and I hear him going. So what do you want to do tonight? And I turn around, and I go. Are you asking me? And then he, he doesn't even acknowledge me. He answers himself. Oh, I don't know. You want to go out to dinner? Whoa. And I'm going, whoa. <laughs> this guy is nuts. So wow. I don't know if he still does that. But uh, if you knew John Better. Sterling, you know why he talked to himself because nobody else wanted to. But anyway, I digress. You want to say something, Patrick, it looked like? No, I, I was just responding to that because I would immediately, I, I was thinking of, uh, you know, like uh, Sybil or something like that. Yeah. I listen to him a lot. I mean, I have no choice. I'm a Yankee fan, but yeah. I listen to a lot of Yankee games. I, so I listen to John a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> he's become a voice of the summer for me, you know. Oh, I see. Okay. So somebody just called, called John Harrison. And I answered it, and uh, there was nobody there. So 
I don't know what happened. I don't even know who John Harrison is. So, John, if you want to call, you've got exactly uh, two and a half minutes left to call the show. Uh, Miranda, did you call for any specific reason, Uh, something that triggered uh, something you wanted to say? Uh, The thing that that got me to finally pull the trigger on calling was when Phil called Carlos Mencia Mexican. (laughs) He's Honduran. He's He's Honduran. He's Honduran. He's Honduran. So he makes all those jokes about being Mexican, you know, and he's not even Mexican. Yeah, he stole it from a Mexican, I guess. (laughs) He's a Honduran. He stole everything else. (laughs) Yeah, well, I think in Honduras, the uh, the uh, the uh, main sport down there is stealing jokes. Thank you. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you. I w- I'm glad. Oh, you oh, oh! Me. And Alex, I was gonna, I, I was gonna say you're, you're going to hell. But now I don't remember what for. I'm going to <laughs> hell, but you don't he's remember. Going to go to hell anyway. Well, so. you know something. It, that's not very. Well, but nice. he's Jewish, so no, he's already in hell. That's not very. Uh, <laughs> John Harrison is trying this again, and he doesn't get on. Huh? That's strange. Well, anyway, he's trying. Where, oh, he's trying. Where 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 is he? I can't. I, I'm sorry if the TV people suddenly lost you. I have no idea where he is. Uh, I hear that thing going blop 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 blop, but I can't see it on the screen. You know what, Alex? You have a uh, Time Warner cable, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, last couple of days, uh, actually, really uh, started about a week ago, but they've been having issues and. In- some of their larger markets. Uh, it's been a lot of complaining in, in New York and Los yeah. Angeles specifically. We, I've, been pretty, I've been pretty steady, although this morning around 7.30, uh, we, the network went down and up and down and up and down, but that only happened for about 15 minutes. Hey, listen, I, I got to get out of here, otherwise Jim is going to uh, secede from the union. I don't, I don't know what he's going to do. They what, already have. Huh? They already have. Yeah, they already have. Hey, uh, oh, oh, glad you called, uh, Miranda. Always love to see you. Uh, and, of course, the lovely and attractive Patrick Blazik, who is wearing no <laughs> clothes underneath that shirt. And uh, uh, Rob, who sits there sipping away, listening to the program, and occasionally making a very good, important comment. Yeah, I know. I see your KGB shirt there, uh, Patrick. See my bare arms? Yeah. Charles, thank you. Been with us almost every night. And, and what, what do you? Laugh- well, I can do it. What are you laughing about, Miranda? Phil's got bare arms. You know, he's he's see, I gotta write the bare arms. Oh, I see. <laughs> there, to bare breasts. In, yeah, <laughs> yeah. your world. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Josh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm running a little late, but I want to remind everybody that uh, Rob is putting a lot of work into another yet another weekend of uh, GabNet Rewinds, and uh, be sure to be listening to him all weekend long. Uh, in the meantime, thanks to all of you for having uh, participated tonight, and including Jim, who had joined at one point. Uh, have a nice weekend, everybody. Okay? Thanks, and I'll see you all again on Monday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, will you?